in order to subscribe to my channel please click here or click here please share comment and like my videos and channel hey guys this is Gaurav welcome to SAS with service now in this video I will show you how you can integrate two ServiceNow instances with the help of integration hub. So this video is about ServiceNow e-bonding with integration hub. In order to do this integration, we should have two different ServiceNow instances. So I have this first instance that is primary instance I have which is a source instance where we will create the incident record which will create the incident record in another instance and that destination instance I have is this one so dev 79119 is our destination instance and dev 99846 is our source instance now in order to do this integration with integration hub you have to enable integration hub plugin in your instance now it depends the kind of feature you want the kind of license you have because in integration hub is a is a paid application so it's totally up to your organization your customer or client what kind of license they have taken with service now so let's start this integration so as we have this destination instance first we have to make sure that we have username and the password for this particular instance so in that case i will just verify so i will quickly go to sys underscore user dot list and i have this particular account that is integrate dot sas i have given two roles to this particular user that is idle role so that it, this user can create an update incident in this particular instance and rest underscore service role so I have given two roles let's go to our source instance over here so we will start with creation creating the flow so as you know integration hub is basically part of flow designer so you have to create a flow you have to create some workflow kind of a trigger points so that it can integrate and it can trigger the integration and send the call to destination instance before we start this integration we also need to put our credentials that means the instance which we are connecting to we should have saved the credentials first and we should also create the connection so for that what do you have to do uh, here you will see credentials so you have to first create the credentials so in that case you will click here new you will select basic auth credentials I will type SAS ebond auth here I will do SAS uh, I think we can select integrate dot SAS and I can give the password which I have um, I don't have to select connection alias over here so I can just quickly click on save so this credentials are saved now and then I can just quickly go to connections so I have to create some connections not some just one connection basically for this particular one so it depends on your on your uh, integration that if you have multiple integrations that you definitely have to create multiple HTTP connections so we have to select HTTP connection here I will give it a name as SAS eBond connection I have will, I have to select the credential so we just created SAS eBond auth I will select that I have to select connection alias as well so ServiceNow is already giving me this particular alias that is eBonding so you can just select the existing one this is out of the box for now here I have to put the connection URL so if I go here in my destination instance I will select this URL I have to copy this and then I will go over there and put it here I don't have to use mid server so I will just click on save so we are done so we are done with connection 
and credentials because those are kind of prerequisite before you initiate this integration. Let's create the flow. So you have to click on Action Designer under Integration Hub Application. This will open up the Flow Designer. Then you have to click here New. You have to create a new flow. So in that case, we will do SAS Now eBonding. I will click on Submit. A new flow will be created. It's created. Now the important part here is you have to select the trigger point and how exactly this integration will be triggered. So in that case, what we will do, I will select here, I will select created or updated. Whenever data will be created or updated, then it should trigger that particular integration. Maybe let's, let's select just in, uh, created for now because I just want to show you a quick demo that how exactly it works. So we will do it for created. I can select the table here and that will be incident. I will select incident table. Now, if I will select created and I will do, I will select the table incident, then what will it will do? It will trigger that integration call every time. And that's what we don't want because we want this integration maybe for a specific incidents. So in that case, I will add a filter and that filter would be assignment group. So if assignment group is this one. So I just created a random uh, group just to show you that how exactly this integration can be triggered. So any incident will be created and it will be assigned to this particular group. Then this, this particular integration will be triggered. So this is the trigger point. So I will just click on done. You can see I'm not doing any kind of scripting. It is just straightforward drag and drop selecting the configurations and values. That's it. So it is done. Then I will click on here. Now I will directly select the action because we want to create an incident in our destination instance. I will click on action. You will go a little bit bottom. You have to select service now e-bonding example. I will select here. Then it will show you some options. So here we have create remote incident. You can also look up remote incident. So I think it, it automatically got selected, but I have to delete it. Um, I will go here. You can also uh, update remote incident if you want. So as of now, I will select create remote incident. I will select this one. Here I will select the record which was created over here. I will select this one, incident record. And that's it, you are done. So if you will click on done here, you don't have to do anything else. That means your integration at least Primary integration is done. Maybe phase one integration, I would say. You definitely want to add more functionalities, but at least you are able to connect to instances now. So as of now, we are just creating the record. So in that case, what I will do, I will click on save. And then I will activate it. So we are already done with connections, credentials, the username which we have in our destination instance, everything is done. So this is also activated. The next step is just testing. So till here, you are done with development. So now you can understand how fast it is. So I can just go to here and I will go to my incident management module. And here I will click on create new. I will select any, any caller I want, maybe able tutor. I will select a category, um, any service I want, maybe SAP Enterprise Services, configuration item I can select, maybe .NET Framework. And here this is create incident in. Now to make sure that it is selecting the same instance, I will copy from here and paste it over there create incident in this and this is really important that you have to select assignment group because that's how it will trigger if you will not select the same group because you have mentioned that in the condition then this integration will not work so i will click on save now so incident is created in our source instance let's go and see in flow designer first before checking this 
incident in destination instance so i will just click here i think you can def directly click here executions for this particular flow so you can see it says complete so i can click here it will show you whether it was completed or not if you can expand it as well and yes it was created so we have this 1003 so and i think returning value so you can see the remote incident number we have is 510057 that means it is created let's check in our destination instance i will go over there and this is our destination instance i will just quickly go to incident module maybe click on open and try to search absolutely so now you can see we have this new incident which we created in our another instance that was a source in, in instance and it, it has created the new incident also in the destination instance you can see all these all these categories subcategory fields which we selected over there it automatically selected so that's a really great feature that you don't have to select the fields as well you can definitely control this that which, which particular field you want to update it that's something you can definitely do there are other more features as well you can update the incident you can look up for the incident if that incident is available in that particular instance or not I think this is really great feature and and you must have seen that I have not done a single coding while doing this integration which every developer had to do lot of coding just to integrate two instances so I hope you liked my video thanks for watching and have a great day